grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're privileged to offer this time of worship through the ministry of the First Baptist Church of Bryson City, North Carolina. We lift up the Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and we trust that by His Spirit we'll meet Him in praise and worship during these moments. I encourage you to join in with whatever responses you find helpful. Sing, pray, stand, kneel, Raise your hands, take notes, confess sin, and surrender to God. Be at liberty in the Spirit. Together may we see God more clearly, savor Him more fully, and share Him more freely. Good morning and welcome to worship. Pastor John is uh, taking some much needed staycation. I, I believe he is well, just uh, taking some rest and we pray for John and Pat that they see this is a good time of rest and I look forward to seeing them again next week. So welcome to worship. We're looking forward to uh, hearing scripture today and uh, singing together uh, wherever you are joining together and lifting up the Lord uh, today in worship. Next week would be our regularly scheduled Lord's Supper uh, observance here at First Baptist Church in Bryson City. And we, we are trying to uh, work things out so that we can meet in person next week um, and, and participate in that Lord's Supper. If, if you're at home joining us, go ahead and have your elements ready there to join us online from, from home if you're not able to, to be here. If, if we're able to be here, we're probably going to uh, make a decision. We'll make a, an announcement Friday of this week if we're going to be able to meet next Sunday in person. So if we, if not, we'll be online uh, with the live stream as we are, as we have been. If we are, of course, we'll be observing the, all the precautions, uh, wearing our mask and uh, distancing ourselves from each other, and uh, using hand sanitizer and washing our hands. And uh, our services will be a little bit shorter so that we're not together as long uh, and we can, we can worship in, in as safely as possible. So we'll be making an announcement about that on Friday of this week for next Sunday. But be prepared to take the Lord's Supper uh, either at home with your elements or if we're able to be here, you'll pick up a individual communion uh, elements as you enter the, the sanctuary next week, a small cup with a with a wafer and, and the juice there together and we'll be able to do that next week look forward to that special time of worship and like i said we will make an announcement about that on friday of this week so as we join together in worship today we'll uh, begin continue here in worship with 
scripture from Isaiah and then some musical praise from our praise team. Isaiah 55, verses 1 and 2. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Delight yourself in the abundance. Amen.
Good morning. This morning's scripture is from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. The Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry, will save them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to gather again together in your house. And Lord, we ask that you will be with those that aren't able to be with us this morning, those that are suffering, that are sick. We ask that you will place your healing hands upon them. You will just touch the hearts of those that are here and those that are listening. That you will give Brother Ted the words to say that need to be heard. We lift him up before you, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for that prayer and the scripture reading and the beautiful music. Thank you all. God satisfies our soul. We're continuing in the in the book of Matthew. Uh, Jesus has been uh, preaching parables. Pastor John's been preaching the parables that Jesus was preaching, and uh, this this sermon today I entitled it "Compassionate Provision." It's from Matthew chapter fourteen, and it continues talking about the kingdom of God, or actually demonstrating the kingdom of God some today. In this in this passage, this kingdom of God that Jesus talks so much about in the Gospels, it's it's very dynamic, it's very multifaceted, thus all the parables that Jesus told about it. Jesus defines the kingdom of God by telling these stories. He tells parables about the kingdom of God and what it is like. But Jesus also demonstrates the bounty and the goodness of God's kingdom. We're in chapter 14 today, but th these parables leading up to it in chapter 13. Chapter 13 says he spoke many things to them in parables. And later in the chapter it says that he did not speak to them without a parable. Some of the parables that he spoke, um, he said, Hear the parable of the sower. He said the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seeds in his field. He said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed before that. Um, he said the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea. And he says a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the head of household who brings out of his treasure things new and old. And all these parables lead up to today's passage where Jesus demonstrates what the kingdom of God is like. So as we read this passage today, actually two contrasting stories, I just invite you to imagine that you're there on the scene listening to what's going on and observing, watching what's taking place here as we read along. You'll notice there's two stories here, two contrasting stories. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 21 in the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead, and that's why miraculous powers are at work in him. For when Herod had John arrested, he bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. 
Although Herod wanted to put him, John, to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Having been prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. And although he was grieved, the king commanded it be given because of his oaths and because of his dinner guests. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the body and buried it. And they went and reported to Jesus. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This place is desolate and the hour is already late. So send the crowds away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, you, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food, and breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. They picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets. There were about 5,000 men who ate, besides women and children. Let's pray together. Father, we hear this word and we pray that... Uh, your word is spoken and your word is heard here today, Lord. Give us compassionate hearts and a willingness to serve as we hear in this passage, Father. And be with us now as we worship by breaking the bread of life, the, the word of the scripture. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. In this scripture, God acts in Christ to meet real human needs. And the kingdom of God can be seen in Jesus' compassionate provision, his compassionate provision for this crowd. We see where, Je where Jesus, the contrast here is where Jesus felt compassion and provided for this crowd, Herod murdered John. So as G the disciples of Jesus, we are called to faith in the crucified and the risen Jesus and to life compassionately meeting needs in his name. So we do pray for that compassion. We do pray for hearts willing to serve. And the question that I simply seek to answer in the sermon today is, what can we do as his disciples to meet needs in Jesus' name? What can we do to meet needs in Jesus' name? Well, first, we must choose which kingdom we will give our allegiance to. There's two stories here. Positioned side by side, I think, by no mistake, in, in the Gospel of Matthew. Both of these include a meal, a banquet of sorts. Herod is having a birthday party, his own birthday party. Jesus provides up what ends up being something like a, a seaside picnic. But however, the details of the story of Jesus' meal, they are in sharp contrast with the details of what goes on at Herod's banquet. So let's notice a few of these details. Uh, first, we'll look at the details from the Jesus part of the story here. Uh, reading in verse 13, it says, Now, when Jesus heard about John, he formed a militia to retaliate and a show of strength. No, that's not what it says. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew 
from there in a boat to a secluded place. He withdrew. Jesus was a king, but his nonviolent, non-retaliatory withdrawal demonstrated an alternative vision of what kingship and what leadership looks like. Here in chapter 14 and, and once before in chapter 12, verse 15, you can check that out. Both times Jesus withdrew. And he didn't withdraw to go hide. He withdrew and he went away and he healed the sick in both instances. He withdrew to go about his business. He withdrew to go about what he came to do in the way that he came to do it. So contrast that with the picture of the scene at Herod's banquet. Saving face in front of his family and his guests, Herod gave in to self-preservation, violence, and abuse of power. In Herod's kingdom, his pride, his power, and his privilege allowed him to literally get away with murder. But before I cast stones, I must confess that it's not easy to keep our pride in check. It's not easy to keep power in check, and it's not easy to keep privilege in check. Now is it? There is a word here that does anchor this story. The word is compassion. In verse 14, it says, When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them. This word compassion, uh, the first thing that came to mind was a young pastor, Andy Hale. He was the camp pastor at Deep Impact in Red Springs, North Carolina, when we took our middle school and high school kids on a mission trip there a few years ago to serve in that, that part of our state. And I'll always remember Andy was very animated and very, as he elaborated on, on this word um, behind compassion. It was a very memorable time. Uh, the, the Greek word is splachna. It has a guttural sound to it, and Andy made a big deal about that, a sound we don't use when we talk. We're usually coughing or uh, having something come up when we make that sound. But uh, splachna, uh, this word has to do with your entrails, uh, the inward parts, the, what's deep down inside. Uh, we might use the term a, a gut reaction, or, or it means to be moved deep down inside to, to have compassion to be moved in the inward parts. Have you ever had a feeling like that? Have you ever been moved deep down inside about something? Well, that's the feeling that Jesus had when he saw the crowd. This kingdom of God and the evil powers of this world are at odds. Christ demonstrates a kingdom that is nonviolent, compassionate, generous and inclusive Herod employed violence selfishness and pride so a first step that we need to take to meet needs in Jesus name is to decide which kingdom we will give our allegiance to a second thing we can do to meet needs in the name of Jesus is to see needs as an opportunity to serve and not an imposition. Twice in this passage, Jesus demonstrates meeting, needs, meeting the needs of others with a servant's heart. When Jesus heard the news about John being killed, Jesus went off in a boat by himself. When he comes back to the shore, he sees this large crowd. Jesus didn't avoid them. He didn't turn them away. Instead, Jesus turned his attention to the crowd and he healed their sick. As, Jesus, as the evening came, Jesus does it again. It comes time to eat and instead of sending everyone off, Jesus provides again. This time with a satisfying meal with plenty for everyone to eat. Chapter 14 verse 20 said they all ate and were satisfied. Now, the first person that came to my mind when I thought about um, this idea of meeting needs with the servant's heart was, is Pastor John Taglarini. Pastor John's not here today, but 
uh, I get to work in the same study office with, with John on a regular basis and and he came to mind because John's got a lot of responsibility lots of things he, he's responsible to do and take care of but he's so willing to keep an open door if he's working at his desk you can uh, always always talk to John and I think John makes this quote to me from time to time, and I think he's quoting one of his mentors. He says that uh, people are not an interruption to the work of ministry. People are the work of ministry. And John's a great example of this. I'm thankful to be able to work with John on a regular basis. Now, me, I'm still learning these lessons. I, I get a little bit antsy sometimes. Uh, there's a lot, always a lot to do. But just this week, uh, I had set aside time to prepare and to study for today and I'd been studying through the week later in the week I actually came here in the sanctuary to sit a place I knew that it would be quiet and and I would not be disturbed and to uh, to get my thoughts together and to spend time in prayer and just at that time a young man comes to the church office and asks to speak to a pastor so I set aside what I'm doing and over an hour later a uh, young man that was experiencing homelessness, had lots of physical needs, uh, didn't ask for anything. He said, I just needed somebody to talk to. Thank you. Verse 16 here in our scripture today, it highlights our connection with our neighbors. Some ministry we do here at First Baptist Church we call neighbor to neighbor. It's scriptures like this that speak to that to that name for our ministry. Verse 16 says, when the disciples came to Jesus, um, they basically said, hey, Jesus, we're, we're out here in the boonies, and it's supper time. You need to send these people back to town so they can buy some, buy some food. And Jesus replies. He says, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Apparently, Jesus expects his disciples to see needs not as an imposition, but as an opportunity to serve. So a third thing that we can do to meet needs in the name of Jesus is to commit whatever we have to Jesus. Here in chapter 14, verses 17 and 18, they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. God uses what we bring. And there's no offering that's too small for God to use. And sometimes to use in miraculous ways. Whatever it is. Um, I remember I was a freshman in college. I had, a, had been working in Christmas trees, saved up some money. I bought a little red Toyota pickup truck. It's really all I had. But I said, God, let me use this truck to serve you. I don't know, maybe I can haul something for somebody or give somebody a ride or whatever, whatever I can do. I want to use this for your glory. So whatever we have, we can entrust ourselves and the use of our resources, both to God. Several of the uh, popular Christian financial planners, they... They all seem to have a, a similar mantra. There's, you have folks like nowadays it's uh, Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan. Uh, used to it was, uh, I believe, Ron Blue. And one of my favorites, the late Larry Burkett. They all repeated something to this effect. They would say, everything belongs to God. We are just temporary stewards. That's kind of the starting point for what they would say. It, it's all God's, to sum it up. It's a great s short phrase to remember when we face that challenge of committing whatever we have to Jesus. So whoever we are, especially kids, uh, our, our students, teenagers, um, start young, start now. Just commit what you have to God. And remember that everything belongs to God. Just exercise that discipline and treat things like that. We're just temporary stu stewards. And God can use what we bring, even in miraculous ways. So it is through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus that God, this kingdom of God, stepped decisively into history. 
And God ushered in his kingdom into the lives of men and women and boys and girls. And we can choose to give our allegiance to God's kingdom. We can see needs not as an imposition, but as an opportunity, opportunity to serve. And we can commit all that we have to Jesus. Now, I'll, I'll admit that this kingdom is often very different than the earthly kingdoms and the powers that we know and what we see working around us today. But thankfully, we can listen to Jesus. We can listen to Jesus tell the parables of the kingdom. And we can keep our eyes on Christ to see this kingdom, to see God's compassionate provision, and to discern our role in these needs that we see all around us today. So I'll ask our musicians to come and we'll go into our song service here. But I just challenge you with these things today to choose the kingdom that you will give allegiance to, to meet needs in Christ's name, see people as a chance to serve, not as an interruption or, and to give what we have to God. So. Amen. We'll begin with a hymn that we don't sing too much, but a great message. My faith has found a resting place, and then we'll move into in times like these and end up with how firm a foundation. <laughs>
thank you for worshiping with us. I pray that you open your heart to all that God has and is giving us through his Son, Jesus Christ. May his Spirit fill us and enable us with grace and peace. I also thank you for your continued support of the ministry of the First Baptist Church of Bryson City. You can find online giving options on our webpage at firstbaptistchurchbc.org. The office is open during the week from 8 to 12, and you can send mail uh, the old-fashioned way at Post Office Box 247, Bryson City, North Carolina, 28713. Pray for us. Serve with us. Love God. Love others. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly with God. And God bless you.